Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Maida, and you're watching Maida Pours. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, if it's your first time here, uh, thanks for deciding to click this video and come and say hello. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. I appreciate y'all so, so much. So for today's video, I am going to be showing you how I mix my paints. So this is a very general tutorial and it is specifically going to be focusing on American Flood Floetrol. I'm in California. This is what I have access to. There are many, many, many ways to mix paint. There is no one right way to mix paint. So what I'm showing you today is just how I mix my paint. Not necessarily how everyone should do it or maybe even what works best for you. Um, this is just what I do. So I've had a few people ask me to go over how I do mix up my paint. So here we go. Here's how I do it. So step one is I take my flood flow troll and I strain it into a larger container. I have a bunch of these kind of large mixing cups that I got from the dollar store. Um, I am going to go ahead and probably use about half of this quart of flood flow troll or at least prepare or have it ready to go. I might not use it all. If I don't use it all, I will just pour it back into the, um, the thing, the, you know, the container. So first, first step, shake it. Just make sure it's nice and shaken up. Sometimes if you forget to shake it, you'll notice there's kind of like, I don't know, kind of like a slimy top layer. So you want to make sure that that is shaken up. And then I just, I don't measure this part. I'm just kind of, I'm, this is just to strain it. Sometimes Floetrol gets lumps in it. I'm using a regular kitchen strainer and I'm just kind of straining it through, getting rid of the lumps. This is a regular kitchen strainer. However, I do not use it in my kitchen any longer. It is my solely my Floetrol strainer now. I highly recommend separating uh, kitchen utensils that you've used for painting and not use them as kitchen utensils anymore. <laughs> so that is plenty of Floetrol. It is important to rinse this off kind of immediately. Otherwise, if the Floetrol dries in there, you're gonna have a heck of a time getting it clean. So take the time to strain right away, or to rinse your strainer right away, okay? Okay, so here's the Floetrol. It's just Floetrol. Now, sometimes I will add Minwax to my Floetrol to make it mimic Australian Floetrol. I'm not gonna do that today because this is kind of for beginners. This is just how, when you're first starting, I think it's important to keep it simple, not overcomplicate it for yourself because you're gonna get overwhelmed. There are other things you can put in Floetrol to kind of make it do stuff. Um, we're not gonna mess with that today. This is just how I mix my paints with Floetrol and water, okay? So this is just, this is ready to go. That's Floetrol, it's strained and it's ready to go. And then I'll break out my kitchen my kitchen uh, scale here. Um, again, it's actually not really a kitchen scale, it's my paint measuring scale. <laughs> but that's where you would find it on Amazon or in a store, um, is, you know, it's a kitchen scale. So I have some smaller cups here. These I believe are eight ounce cups. Um, forgive me if I'm wrong on that. And I make sure my unit on my kitchen scale, I measure in fluid ounces. Um, you could do grams. Uh, however you want to do it is fine. Um, you just have to keep your ratios in mind. And I do not always take the time to measure my paints this way now. I've been pouring long enough to where I'm a lot more comfortable kind of mixing paints by feel. And by, ab like, absolutely, if that's how you prefer to mix paints, mix paints by feel. I'm not saying that is a wrong way, but when I first, first started acrylic pouring, I really, really struggled with my paints. Um, 
you know, getting muddy, just not, just not, you know, creating art that I really thought was beautiful. And I found that if I was really careful with mixing my paints and actually taking the time to measure them, then my, my paints weren't my issue. You know, I still had a lot to learn <laughs> and I still had many fails, but my paints like consistency and how they like merge together i stopped having those kind of problems so i cannot remember what youtuber gave me the advice to actually break out a kitchen scale but i applied it and i am forever grateful and i apologize that i cannot remember who it was it was at a time when i was just like watching i don't even know so many videos so okay let's get started I have several different kinds of paint here that I'm gonna show you how to mix. I've got some Deco Art Metallic. I've got some Golden Fluid Acrylic. Um, and I've got some Artist Loft uh, Flow, uh, or sorry, this is not Artist Loft Flow Acrylic. This is just regular Artist Loft paint, which is essentially um, the way I mix this would be exactly how I mix Liquitex paint. So I do have this um, heavy body Liquitex paint, this is like in the professional grade of Liquitex. It's not Liquitex Basics. And I do mix this slightly different. So this this way, the way I mix Artist Loft is exactly the same way I mix Liquitex. But I want uh, the paint, the painting I have in mind, I wanted to use this light blue color. So we're mixing up some Artist Loft. So we're gonna start with the Artist Loft because this is, I feel, kind of like the most basic paint. I think that Liquitex and Artist Loft are great paints to start with. Um, they're what I started with, so they're what I've recommended to some friends who, you know, are ask, always ask what, should I, what kind of paints. This Artist Loft and then Liquitex Basics, which I do have here, but I'm not using in this uh, tutorial. This is Liquitex Basics, um, are great paints to start with. So. My basic, my basic recipe with Artist Loft is a two to one, uh, two parts Floetrol, one part paint. So I put my cup right here on my scale. I'm gonna try to turn this around, even though it's a little weird for me. <laughs> so maybe, hopefully. So I just pour in my pouring medium or my Floetrol first. And I'm gonna use really, so I'm using two parts Floetrol to one part paint. I'm gonna keep these numbers simple. Um, I'm gonna use um, one, I'm sorry, two ounces of Floetrol to one ounce of paint. So I think I like to keep my number simple, not just for a tutorial, but for myself. <laughs> so I do measure this, or I, you measure this carefully, the two ounces, you know, if it's not perfect, it's, it's fine if it's not perfect, you know, but you know, try to get it to two, that says 2.1, no big deal. And then I zero it out again to get it to be zero. Always kind of smack the bottom, get the paint to the bottom there. And then I'm gonna squeeze out one ounce of this Liquitex paint for that two to one ratio. So there's one ounce of paint for my two ounces of Floetrol. Then I take my little stern stick or popsicle um, and I stir. It is very important to really incorporate the paint and the pouring medium. You don't want to like not stir it properly. And you know, we'll do this in real time. I won't uh, subject you to real time stirring for the other paints. But keep in mind that it is very important to really like get it mixed. I always scrape the sides and stir it around. I always kind of scrape it off, make sure that it's nice and mixed. So I'm gonna set this over here for a second because I wanna show you without any water, this is kind of like what it's looking like. So, can I show you? Sorry, it's so hard for me to get that angle. So, it's leaving a mound, 
okay? It's not like sinking, it's leaving a pretty significant mound. Now, I am gonna be using this paint for a Dutch pour, which means I'm gonna be thinning it down quite a bit. But this part, I don't measure. Sometimes I measure. When I first started, I measured, but it's much better to just add the water a little bit at a, bit, at a time. Now, a lot of people say use distilled water. I uh, honestly just generally use purified drinking water. It's not distilled. I don't have problems with it. Um, so I just add a few drops, you know, just a doop, little bit. I want to add a little bit at a time so that the water doesn't like overwhelm the paint basically. And after every time you add that water, kind of check it, see how it's drizzling in. Now for a Dutch pour, I really want it to just sort of pour right off the spoon and really not leave a mound in there. And it is still, with that little bit of water I use, still leaving a slight mound. But now this consistency might be what you're looking for, for like a ring pour, you know? So depending on the technique, is how much you're gonna thin down your paint, okay? Now I'm doing a Dutch pour, so I'm thinning this down quite a bit. Just add a few drops at a time. Incorporate it well after each time. And it's still dripping. Like it's, it's, it's very fluid and it's still leaving a mound. And for a Dutch pour, I don't want a mound. I want it to sort of just pour straight in. Now, I find that with Liquitex or Artist Loft, these are pretty heavy body paints. I would say they're medium body paints technically, but um, I find that I do have to add quite a bit of water to get them to a nice kind of pouring consistency. And this is, every paint is gonna be different. That's why I'm showing you a few different brands of paint here. <laughs> but most Liquitex paints and Artist Loft paints are gonna be mixed, you know, with quite a bit of water to get it done. So it's starting to drizzle. It's really not leaving much of a mound anymore. It's just like a small mound that quickly kind of molds back into the cup. Um, this would be great. I, I'd be done if I were doing a flip cup, you know, that would be perfect. But I'm going to just add a little bit more water because I'm doing a Dutch pour. So when you, like a lot of times when people ask like, what are your pouring, what's your pouring recipe? A lot of times people will give you ratios and then they'll say, and then add water to, you know, to kind of technique, so to speak. Um, so this is what people mean <laughs> when they say that, if that ever confused you, which in the beginning, it confused the heck out of me. So that's what I'm trying to, so this is getting close. I think that's probably the last little bit of water I'm going to need to add. Scrape it off the sides. And it's not 100% disappearing upon immediate, but it's so close, that's good for a Dutch pour. I'm fine, that's like, I think that's gonna move around on my canvas just fine. Sorry if this is not like perfectly in camera there, okay. So there you go, that is my blue. Next up, I'm gonna show you how I mix up um, this DecoArt Metallic. Actually, I'm this, I would mix these up the exact same way. They're different brands, but they are pretty much the same consistency, which I will show you. And you wanna make sure that you've kind of mixed up your paint in here too. Cause when you first open it, well, honestly, if you haven't used it for a while, it's 
this type of paint has probably separated a bit so you do want to go ahead and mix up that paint and see how this paint is like I haven't done anything to it right this is just straight out of the jar and see how it already flows <laughs> so obviously this is much more fluid paint and so I do a paint that's this consistency so I go ahead and I zero out my scale I'm doing a one-to-one -one ratio, but I'm still going to just go with one ounce of Floetrol. Slowly pour it in to one ounce. Again, if it's not exactly perfect, that's okay. We're just, this is so you can get the feel of what these ratios should feel like. If you, when you kind of get more comfortable with it, you don't have to measure it, you know, you kind of can eyeball it, but the way the paints feel when you mix them, that's what's going to tell you. So I'm adding in one more ounce of the metallic, one to one. You could do one to two. Um, you could mix these up the same exact way that you mix up your other paints. You know, that's experiment, test it out. Again, this is how I mix my paints, okay? So it's at 1.9. That's honestly good enough, but my perfectionist self oh that's it too there we go okay so go ahead i recommend putting the lid back on your paint and then from here we're going to mix up we'll speed this part up okay okay so this is all mixed up before any water has been added. And it's drizzling, but it's leaving a nice, like, it's leaving a mound for sure. Sorry, I'm so sorry that I can't like show that to you properly. I'm gonna have to work on my camera getting a little bit higher so I can show that to you. Anyway, better, but, um, but we are gonna, add a little bit of water. We want to get this paint to the same consistency-ish, very close, as my blue paint. But the amount of water I add to get there is going to be very different because it's a different type of paint. So, I want to make sure all that water, I just added a few drops and it's already so much more uh, flowy. Like just with a, like, I don't know, remember how many times I had to add water to that Liquitex? Like I only added a little bit of water and it's already almost there. So we're gonna add just a little bit more. Again, I just add a few drops at a time, maybe like, I don't know, half of a tablespoon, maybe a couple of teaspoons. Um, and that all mixed up. I always like to scrape it off the sides there. Make sure it's all mixed. And that, is pretty good. Um, metallic paint is almost always going to feel a little bit thicker than like, you know, the paint that's not metallic. I will bring in like, I always, if I'm trying to get to something to the same consistency, like I always compare it, you know, eyeball it. Um, I might add just a little bit more water because again, it is metallic. Want it to flow. And that's good. That is good. Again, we're going for a Dutch pour, so we want that pretty thin. So next up, I'm gonna show you how I do golden fluid gold. acrylic. Now this one, I don't have an exact, um, I'm still gonna put it on the scale, but I don't have an exact amount of golden fluid acrylic that I use per per ounce of Floetrol. So I am going to do an ounce, I'm going to pour an ounce of Floetrol in here. Just because, I don't know, just to keep it consistent. <laughs> so we're going to go work with an ounce of Floetrol. And like 0.3 ounces of paint, like, like honestly, or 0.2. 
I mean, just not a lot. Like I'm just drizzling. Like I gave it a nice squirt. It went up to 0.3. Um, and this is gonna be more than enough paint. Look how rich that paint, it just like media incorporates. And this is why I love golden fluid acrylic paint. It just, it's like the colors just are so rich and you really use less paint um, like per flow tall. Honestly, I probably could have used 0.1 or 0.2 and I would have still had a beautiful like color rich. This is Payne's gray, but it's like a beautiful rich color. So I haven't added any water to this and it already almost just directly flows into the cup. Golden fluid acrylic paint is very, very fluid. I am gonna add just a couple, like literally just a, like boop. That was probably like a teaspoon of water. Not even, not even a teaspoon, I don't know. I've never quite measured the water I just poured. Like, doo -doo. <laughs> and like I'm not exactly sure what my little tiny pour is. <laughs> and that's really it. I mean, it is so fluid. It is barely leaving a trace on top of the cup. It's good, it's good. Fluid acrylic paint is easy to mix up. I find it quite easy. And last but not least, get one more cup. I'm going to do this Liquitex Heavy Body. This, this paint is, uh, it's Prussian blue and I love this color, um, but this paint is definitely like, it's, it's thicker even than the Liquitex Basics. This is the one type of paint that I use a three to one ratio on. Um, so I'm not gonna use a full, um, a full three ounces <laughs> because I don't want three ounces. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do 1.5 ounces of Floetrol. And then, so that's three parts, each part being half an ounce, right? So three half ounce parts equals one and a half ounces. And then I'm gonna use 0.5 ounces of this paint. I zero it out, mostly so I don't have to do math in my head. <laughs> and that's 0.2 ounces, 0.3 ounces, 0.4. See how thick that paint is? 0.5, okay. And then I get my little stirring stick. So really, again, you're gonna have to mix, really incorporate. The thicker the paint, the longer you're gonna have to mix it up. So golden fluid acrylic paint, super thin, mixes up in a snap. This uh, thick bodied paint, well, I, I think I have you on a sped up version here, but it takes a little longer. So once I've got that really well mixed in, it's still quite thick, even doing it the three parts. And so we go and we add our water a little bit at a time. Mix it in. drops Scrap off the top still pretty thick again the thicker the body of the paint the more water you're gonna have to add to get it to consistency especially if you're trying to get to Dutch pour consistency. All right, that's pretty close. I'm gonna add just a couple more drops. A couple more drops. Just 
Okay, now that's basically just drizzling straight. All right, so there you go. That's how I mix up my paints. Artist Loft and uh, Liquitex Basics, which is two to one. The Liquitex Professional Heavy Body is three to one. Uh, Golden Fluid Acrylic is like a squirt to one. <laughs> um, and the Deco Art Metallic, which is how I would mix up this type of paint as well, I do one to one. So each type of paint is gonna have a slightly different ratio. Uh, again, how I mix my paints, it does not mean it's uh, the right way or the only way. This is just how I do it. Again, a lot of people I understand find it very tedious to use a kitchen scale to measure out. I totally understand. Once you get to that point where you really know what these paints are supposed to feel like, uh, then you will probably not have to do that anymore. But when you first get started, I find that it is a very, very useful tool. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I really appreciate you watching. This is a little different than most of my videos in that I'm not making a painting, but um, if it is your first time uh, visiting me, that is what I usually do, is demonstrate how I actually make my paintings. If you're a returning visitor, you know what I usually do. Um, and I do appreciate you watching. Please do hit that like button. Consider subscribing if you enjoy acrylic paint pouring videos. And I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.